I am here with uh, Jack, Nathan, and Steve from Trask Games. Hi, guys. They decided to give me a give me an interview about. Oh my gosh, I'm going to fall off. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> here, why don't you get closer, you, or we can? Well, we can throw a, yeah, throw it we'll down. extend the bed. <laughs> yes, we're all in bed together. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay. This don't is mind fine. So, I, well, let me start off with my first question: Is how'd you guys come up with heaps? <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It was, it's kind of actually kind of a hybrid idea between two kind of divergent ideas that were kind of, I mean, it was honestly a team brainstorming process and we had a few different ideas. Nathan had this really cool idea that you, briefly, maybe you can talk about the pillow Yeah, part. my idea was more for like a, a game, like I was thinking about uh, what are some interesting interactions you could have. And I thought that a classic kind of like activity that people like to do is like building pillow forts and then having pillow fights. Uh, so that was my basic idea. And then Jack had a different idea that was more about like... Yeah, I, I really liked um, playing prop hunt in a lot of the like Team Fortress 2 and those kinds of games. Uh -huh. um, and I knew it was a popular community mode. So I had a really fun idea. I was like, oh, well, you know, what if we allow people to like become props and, you know, maybe see somebody like running around as a chair and it's funny. And it's like a hide and seek sort of thing. And as yeah, a team, it kind of... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I had this idea for like a PvP and a PvE runner. So uh, like some sort of like sky building runner where you run up and you try to reach the top of a mountain. And then we pulled kind of like all three of those elements. And yeah, that's how you... Yeah, so it's kind of, of like okay. a hybrid okay. idea. <laughs> you so, got hide and seek from Jack, right? The kind yeah. of like parkour things from Steve and then the pillow premise from mine. And then you put them all yeah. together and you sort of <laughs> end with this game. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's interesting. So how long has this been in development? I mean, everybody knows you guys from Gods of Gravity, but how long have you guys been working on this one? Yeah. Here. I, let's just wait till the round's <laughs> over. It's gonna blare. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. There we go. It's your freaking dog. <laughs> that might have been me. That was you. <laughs> hey, I'm surprised I'm I got okay, back I'm that quick. That. I'm normally so. not that spry. I usually bounce off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um. So. The, yeah, we've been working on Yeeps for about eight months now, I think. It, but though it started very much as, um, well, you know, we, we work on Gods of Gravity and support that game too. So there was a lot of, um, you know, time spent on both projects. Um, and But I started taking the lead on Yeeps development. Um, and then you know, over time, I, I got the help uh, of Nathan, Steve, and our awesome art team. So, uh, it, mm -hmm. you know, but it's been in development um, for about eight months. Okay. That's after we made the decision. Yeah. We had a couple, I think we had a good month or so of brainstorming ideas, which was a lot of fun first, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, the visually this thing's kind of interesting. So, all right. <laughs> Just uh -huh. kill us, kill us all quick, kill us quick. We don't, we don't <laughs> no, guys, uh, there will be no murdering today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, what was so right, anyway, we were talking about the, the 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 actual designs for this. How did you guys get get where you are now? Because you kind of got a, a Muppet thing going, and then all this this other with it. If you so yeah yeah so there was a lot of work that was gone in over time for kind of the visual style and the visual um, language of the characters, and, and and specifically on the characters, um, it was definitely. You know, we knew based on the, you know, the locomotion system we're doing, like legs don't make sense. <laughs> and, you know, so the, then the question is like, okay, well, how do you create kind of like a charming, playful, like, you know, a little bit dorky, like, like character, right? That's, uh, you know, we like to think of the, the yeeps as a little bit of, they're, they're silly guys, you know, they're like play around. They don't, they don't really ever get hurt per se, you know, you know, they don't die anything like that. Um, so they're kind of like goofy and like, but foolhardy stuff. So I think, uh, you know, we had the idea of, uh, you know, we, we knew the game was about building pillows and you were stuffed. And so um, it was kind of inspired a little bit by like Little Big Planet, which was a game that Nathan and I kind of grew up playing, as well as, uh, you know, the Muppets. We thought like the, you know, we wanted, we've seen a lot of these um, VR games and how they have really funny animations for the characters talking. 
Um, and we knew we needed something, something really, really expressive. And I just like the idea of the characters like yapping around like a Muppet. And so, <laughs> I mean, it, it just kind of stuck. And I think it's, yeah, the main it's, aspects yeah. of the character that I think you'll probably notice, right, are the the very prominent like head, the fact that it animates as you're talking, and then your belly is also a major thing. We thought it was really interesting to have the stuffing for the pillows come straight from you. So, I mean, mm. combine like a large belly with a head and you basically just end up with these characters. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. That's, yeah. That, yeah. That just that but design there, naturally yeah. lent itself to what and we then have there's now. The, yeah, an idea of plushies, like the idea of how, you know, little kids playing with plushies as well, picking them up and how they're just kind of like soft and lovable. Like that was like a fun element yeah. I think we picked up. And that's why we've done some stuff like Maybe it's hard to notice on the ape, but you know when you squish and you go up, it like sags. Yeah. You know, we wanted yep. these characters to feel, feel like, soft uh, and not right. super rigid, not like plastic. You know? Gotcha. They 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 do it's look like they're full of stuffing. Yeah. yeah, you can see that yeah, the body moves, the zippers kind of like swing around as you're moving. Obviously, your head animates. There's a lot of like kind of like right. very fine fine tuned details that comes with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it definitely took a lot a long time to refine and, you know, get it uh, feeling how we wanted it to. So it was a long, a long process. Okay, so yeah. that kind of leads right into my next question: Is how how much did they change from what you started with to what you oh, ended up with? <laughs> I'll stab so, you. First. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. question is verboten. Well, yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the question was, how long uh, did it take the characters to evolve? Uh, honestly, the way we do things here is we usually, uh, you know, start with the simplest thing and then slowly build on it over time so you know we we start when we added a new gadget or the characters or anything we always do the kind of simplest thing first uh yeah. and and that way we can you know test a lot of things at once and we we're able to test the gadgets in their simplest form all the characters and then as we kind of realize like okay well this would be a good direction to take it then we build and do like so you know we'll do almost a lot like horizontally and then over time refine sort of vertically on mm. on things and so the characters definitely were something that they received constant updates pretty much throughout the entire development process they were receiving updates even like like weeks before <laughs> yeah. uh, the game was yeah. released like it was still like these the hands are new the there's like tons of stuff was throughout the whole yeah. the whole time i think just the scenes throughout. alone yeah we talked about that for a while and yeah though the thing that was that locked time. in most soon was was just the proportionality of it. <laughs> yeah. i okay. think that was yeah. something that we kind of settled on early that way we could start developing cosmetics and have a sort of consistent sizes of everything. Yeah, and that's why I yeah. brought on the artists and they came in clutch to help like achieve the vision. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that why you guys brought them on was specifically for, for, for Yeeps? So, or just because you guys were growing and needed needed more help? That wasn't a question I had so, anything, so if you guys don't want to answer, oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some of our art team um, was for Gods of Gravity, and they, they came on a while ago. But we have had some new additions um, for for specifically all the demands that Yeeps had, um, and and still has with with yeah. creating cosmetics, with creating gadgets, and, and all the things you see in the, in this world. You know, it's a little for Gods of Gravity for the most part. You know, it was done as a very small team thing with you know Nathan and I basically doing you know all the development side. So I I did all the ship arts and all that stuff. It was only when we around the time that there was the avatar update that we had more more hands mm. helping us um which was super helpful um but yeah yeeps as you might be able to tell has, has a bit higher <laughs> uh, art demand than than gods of gravity initially did definitely that's why so, we, need, we needed to have a larger team to be able to tackle mm. that so speaking of art let's let's talk about the the tech web which i found really interesting so can we go look at that and maybe yeah. talk about that a little bit and you guys can tell me how this all evolved let's roll i think for me the i i was looking at all these these games you know a lot of these um a lot of free games and you know a lot of games on the MetaQuest store um and i kind of realized like a lot of these games like gorilla tag and stuff they don't have like a meaningful progression you know there's not there's not capabilities that you kind of come in and like unlock over time and i think we we wanted to have a reason for players to really come back and like really to feel like you know i grew up a gamer playing all these games and the progression of games was something that super was super meaningful to me and super super fun um and so you know we, we didn't you know we knew, we knew we wanted to have all these fun you know toys and, and gadgets and, and items that players could unlock um but we also knew 
that progression is important. And, you know, the, the kind of tech web came about because we didn't want players to necessarily instantly be able to get the, the late game items, you know, like the, you know, the, the gun or like all these like items that are far out here because, you know, as, as fun as it is to have those items, I think it's more rewarding if there was a journey to get them. And mm -hmm. so the tech web was, was kind of conceived, it's like almost like a progression tree in games, you know, where you level up and you, you know, get to make these choices about like, oh, who am I? You know, am I, do I want to pursue this, you know, the mobility section, which has a lot of these like ways to get around. Do I want to, you know, be able to fortify and, and you know, farm and like, you know, deceive, I guess. And, and then it was like, oh, do I want to hit people with bats or like blast things <laughs> or blow this stuff up? And so we kind of, we almost view the tech web as like a, a branching skill tree where players can, you know, choose what path of progression they want to take. And we... We really believe in item sharing and you know uh we also hope that players will diversify so you know you go down you know the mobility path and someone else goes down this path but you can share items and so just because you don't need to have everything to be able to experience the whole game and to be able to you know we want to incentivize teamwork right mm. and that's also one of the reasons we have these little um cosmetics along the tech web we wanted people to um kind of sh be able to show off to other people what what items they had. So if you saw someone, let's say wearing a headband, you might know that they have some of these items and you could ask for them. Or someone with, you know, the knight's helmet, you might, you know, oh, do you have any plants? You know, so that's some stuff about the tech web. And I, I think that's at a high level, what we're really trying to achieve with, with this progression system. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I like, mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting. So how did you figure out, uh, let's start with the gadgets, the umbrella. That's the one I have. I love my umbrellas. Mm -hmm. They are awesome. <laughs> okay. So the, uh, how did you guys figure out what items you wanted to use? Did you work your way backward or did you just come up with some wacky ideas and say, you know, let's put this stuff out there. Yeah. Well, Nathan, maybe you can yeah. answer this. I'd say the main thing we knew, first of all, like, especially for kind of like this, this initial set of items was really just like, what are, you know, after we played a couple rounds of hide and seek, you know, just, just without anything, we would think to ourselves, okay, what, what are we missing here? Like, what would I really <laughs> like to do? And so, you know, for the umbrella, for example, it's very easy to see that, for example, when you've got really tall towers or, you know, big sky bases, that it would be so fun to be able to glide down them. And so naturally you just come up with a gadget that kind of fits that immediate need. And so pretty much all of the gadgets here are kind of built out of desire to like create those fun moments that you want to see that, you know, wouldn't be possible without them. Um, so, you yeah. know, like, uh, yeah. like these, these explosive, uh, or these like kind of like, uh, knockback bombs, you know, were built out of a desire to have that kind of like bomb jumping type thing where we knew, yeah. we, like, saw a lot of fun mobility, um, from like blasting yourself around and then, you know, yeah. somebody like, oh, we might want like a smoke grenade. Yeah. Right, I think yeah, something, something that's worth noting here is like, you know, we grew up playing games and really like these kind of gadgets are just almost a hodgepodge of different ideas from different <laughs> games that we grew up playing. You know, I really love Team Fortress 2. I really wanted to have some sort of like explosive jumping thing. That's why I have these, you know, uh, I played Fortnite and the gliders were like one of the most fun things apart that uh -huh. thing. And you know, the, the bounce pads and all these like stuff were like inspired by Fortnite. And, you know, just honestly, it's just a whole, whole collection of ideas uh, from, from our kind of childhood and the games that we played sort of brought together uh, in, in different ways. Yeah, that's a yeah. fair point, too. And I'd say, yeah, this isn't even, this isn't even probably a quarter of the massive list that we had for gadgets. And But these were the ones that, like Nathan said, we had talked about, and after playing with nothing, we kind of added some of the things, like, what would be the best thing? What would be the most beneficial to play time? What would be the most beneficial to, beneficial to creative? And yeah. yeah, these are what we decided on. Well, that's that's interesting. I mean, because I've seen a lot of different. I you talked about the sharing. I've seen a lot of that going on. You know, with like one one of the challenges, you got to do something. Everybody's like, "Who's got a?" You know, and then they'll just mm -hmm. make half a dozen of them mm -hmm. so people can grab them. So that's that's all very interesting. So, all right, give me a second. I'm gonna fall off here while I look at my paper. <laughs> all right, so. Well, rooms, you, so you guys have, I don't know, three or four right now. I know you've added more with the wilds. You had the blue house, the greenhouse, the 
all of that. How many are you planning to have? Or, or... Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> sure. So, you know, we, we want to build out the Yeep sort of universe or the, the world um, at, we're not sure yet the pacing yet. Um, we're still figuring a lot of stuff out, but we know mm. that there will be more rooms. We know that we want to expand the wilds as demand grows for that sort of thing. Um, you know, we hope players can show off maps there um, that maybe they build something in private rooms and they slap the copy and then they go and find a wilds that's the, and then they convince the people or maybe it's empty and they can slam down and hit paste and get their map in there. And then that map can be played on. All by right, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What's public? this whole copy paste <laughs> okay. thing? Copy paste. This oh, is new yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. With, so there's the yeah. There you go. Top left. There. With with these objects over here, these can are useful for building. They can uh -huh. transform your map. So if, so you can copy and paste maps using this, or, or copy any map with this, and it allows you to move them between rooms. So if you build something really cool in your private room. Um, and you want to show it off in public rooms, you can actually copy it and then go into a wild room and then slam it down. Okay, so that's what that whole section does. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, so, but in, in regards to, or I'll, I'll wait for us. <laughs> get up. Yeah. Oh, get I, didn't, I wasn't words. trying to do nice. that. I was just trying to get up. <laughs> the old man can't, can't move. Yeah. In regards to the official maps, we are excited to um, roll out unique new official maps um, as as we are able to create them. We've got even more fun ones excited to unveil. Mm -hmm. um, but we really want to make sure that all maps serve a different purpose and feel unique. So, you know, and, and for as much as we love creating these maps, we also hope that a large portion of the game's maps will be created by our awesome community. So we're excited to um, see community maps and uh you know uh get the high quality ones the recognition the recognition mm -hmm. they deserve yeah that, pretty much yeah. <clears throat> that's kind of a uh, perfect segue into one of my other questions is is there going to be a process for submitting you know a community map you, you know one you've built and say hey i'm super proud of this people love playing on it or is there going to be a way to do that um, yeah, so yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you probably know more about it. You, or I, I okay. can cover it. Um, yeah, so as Jack was sort of alluding to here, I'll stand up one. Okay. Anyways, as Jack was alluding to, um, we really want to see as many of the maps, you know, being built by the community. I think that will make this world feel really special and unique. Um, but we don't necessarily know if we want to have like a really strict process behind it because we think there's something really interesting about sort of the world growing organically and seeing people sort of just like build maps and paste maps in just like on their own and kind of collectively through like a hive mind sort of thing. So the the baseline expectation is that from the get go, we'll see maps slowly start to appear in the wilds as people are building them or bringing them from the private world. And then, um, you know, when we start to see that there's a particular map that's really popular or some maps that people really like, then we'll start to kind of think about it and we will we will have some probably fit uh, method to make it so that we can keep those maps there forever if people are really enjoying them. But we don't want it to be like, a, I'm making a map on my own and I'm gonna like, you know, ask the developers. We really think right. there's something cool about just going straight out there, sharing your idea with everybody, you know, just right away, yeah. um, instead of going yeah, through, think, us through a review process. Yeah, I think my dream would be that there's enough talking about it like people would be like oh have you tried this map have you seen this map and there's enough buzz around a map that would make us see like like what you do with gods of gravity and the trash favorites but there'd be something like where we'd be able to lock it down because i think that's cool if the whole community is hyped up about playing this amazing map and it spreads throughout the community then we want to be able to reward those those players who built something amazing so by locking it in brings me up to my next question so how do i <laughs> open up my so I build my maps. I, I I got I got a couple of friends, but I want everybody to play it. Or, or I don't care if everybody mm -hmm. plays it. Is there going to be a way to open it up to everybody? Um. Yeah. So so right now the yeah. idea is, and and this is a process that we'll see. We just need to test it and see mm -hmm. how our community reacts. Um. But you know, we think that when you build something in your private room, you know, you invite your your intimate friends, your friends that you trust, you know, and they, they can come in there and you can maybe build together or they can check it out be like, this is the great, this is the greatest map. Um, and then through the use of the copy and paster, 
you could then take your map and slam it into an empty plot in, in the wild, in the public map, right? So let's amaz imagine I built this really cool castle in private rooms and Nathan and Steve think it's super cool. And then one day I go in and I copy my castle. I'm in my private rooms, I copy it. And then I go out into the public world and I find sort of an empty wilds room and I paste my map down and I switch it to play mode. And now for a, for a set time, um, you know, my map is in the public world and anyone who will come into this room will see this awesome castle, could play with, with me. And, you know, maybe I even mentioned in the Discord, like, oh, I just put this map down, can I get some feedback? And then people would uh, come there. Um, so the idea is not, it's not so, so much that, you know, you're in private rooms and then you press this magic share button. It's more of a, a more of an active process. Okay. You gotta, you know, take your map and, and find a, find a place for it in the public world. All right. Totally off script. Can I see how this copy paste thing works? Can you guys do it? Uh, yeah, I, we can technically do it. We'd in have the wild to go right to now. wild. Yeah. yeah. Here. Here, I can. Okay, copy. Can... I guess yeah. Only only you'd hear the sound, but. Yeah, um, I mean you yeah, can so hit copy if you want. You can push it even right yeah. now if you want. To. Um, and then let's just run to. We can run to a wild's room. There should be one relative. Yeah. Off we go. I've, I've copied this in. Okay. So the now, lag. The lag. Here, let me, let me bring down a paste button. Oh my goodness. Oh. So if I'm you push out. the paste button now, you can take it over. Load map. We'll Say yes. Let's all vote yes. And. and there you go. Oh, oh, awesome. I. So it it literally <laughs> copies the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be back. I don't think He's glitched out. All right. That is. That is. That's copy and paste. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now I now I gotta go get something else. Dang it, you guys! You're, you're killing and, me. Here. And now, you know, th we're still in creative mode, so I can, you know. Oh yeah, you can put anything. Edit the map. Should I want to make super awesome additions? Say I want to make. Let's go. <laughs> or a little gnome village. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, <laughs> if only I can get out of here. <laughs> Here, I'll build you a... Here, I'll give you a fire... Oh, oh Ender Pearl. <laughs> a blaster. That's purple. And now, we can we don't have blue switch to play mode. Well. <laughs> and now, this is now a map that people can test. And, you know, if you think the gnome pit is a great addition, awesome. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> Gotcha. There you go. All right. Copy paste. Uh, okay. Didn't didn't. Even... I guess we can, we don't have to go back. We can just stay here. <laughs> it is the same, same map. map. <laughs> what kind of limits are you guys looking at on rooms? I mean, how many? I, I I assume there's an upper limit somewhere. And if that happens, do you split off and repeat everything and let people drop in? Uh, oh, how many people can be in a room at once? Uh, yes, or, or or how many uh, I on a on a server? I guess at one time. I mean, it, I don't know. Understand how they're linked together? I assume they are, though. So, yeah, the gist of it right now is um, this is this is a little technical, but it's kind of like what Grill Tag does. Where basically, you know, as you may have seen, each room has like about like eight to ten or so people in there, and if the room is full and someone else walks in, they just play in like a, a copy of the map. So. It's, um, but everything's still in the same physical location. Um, and if you walked around, you could potentially run into entirely new people. Um, but it's just that like, you can kind of pretend that like, if you're standing in this room, you could be with this group of eight people or you could be with another group of eight people. Um, and I mean, it's not exactly kind of flexible, uh, but we expect that um, naturally, you know, as the game sort of like grows and such and there will be more maps like naturally people will sort of disperse out of kind of the really clustered maps and start to find like relatively more consistent behavior as they go out further 
um where you know there are less people but in the in those first three houses you know um there'll probably be a lot of like kind of copies of the same it's that sort of covers the question yeah but the, the gotcha. locationality of everything is is exactly the same so every time you come out a tutorial there's always there's always the starter house there every if you go east there's always you know playground there um it's just uh there are multiple like sort of with. servers per room the right. there might be yeah. different people right so next question then how do i get connected so this place is rocking. There's hundreds of people playing. How do I get connected with my buddies in the same place? Now I've seen the signposts that say, you know, if you're buddies with somebody, it'll point you, you know, there this mm -hmm. way, you know, uh, I think, but, uh, how else can you, is there a way to pair up with them? Yeah. So besides private rooms, um, which, which, you know, if you're, you can join your friends or whatever at any time within the public world, um, it will try to basically so the the signposts will point me to my friends and then when i walk into the the same physical location as my friends it'll try to put me with the same group of people they are so if if nathan's in starter house and i walk into starter house it it will try to put me in the in the same set of server with nathan and sometimes mm -hmm. it may fail it may be full or there may be another issue in which case it'll let you know um but it always just tries to put you with your meta friends Okay, that's yeah. that's interesting. So it, it kind of does it automatically, and you can try. Uh, yeah. You guys can always meet up yeah, at your it's all, private yeah. room. It's working yeah. pretty well so far. Like I, I lost a couple people showing people basement as we added basement, trying to get them to go in. Then I'd get in and I'd join Nathan, and I'd lose all those people <laughs> because yeah. we aren't yeah. friends. But yeah, it was working well. All right, is so now we're talking about spaces. Let's talk about height. On this one, they've built up height. Is the, <laughs> and it looks to me like the public spaces, the build limit height is higher than in the private spaces. Is that true? Or do you can you just expand yours at some point? I, oh, it's only the, the sandbox. So I think you might have a question, a couple questions on mm -hmm. But basically, um, uh, in the private worlds, you can unlock new, like kind of like empty rooms to play in. And every room has the exact same height right now. So mm -hmm. if you unlock a new room, um, it'll be a full-sized room, and it'll be the same size as these ones. Yes. Oh. Yeah. The sandbox. With the, exce with the exception, bit. yeah. Sandbox is a much smaller sort of room where where you can mess around with different things. But it's it's not. A, this is a full-sized room. All the official maps are full-sized rooms, and yeah. when you expand your private world, you you get a full-sized room, sort of like in the direction you expanded it. So. Um, you know, you, yeah, so th there's a standard map size, which is 80 blocks by 80 blocks by 80 blocks. And th that is this room, as you can see, it's pretty big. And so, sometimes yeah. it's deceptive because you can raise and lower the ground as well. So you can dig a pit pretty much through this. And I didn't realize that until I saw Jack do it on that other map. I was like, wait a oh, minute, yeah. you can you can pull the ground <laughs> apart. I'm like, wait a minute. But uh, I, that, that might be news to some folks. So I knew you could build up. I just didn't know you could you pull it down. So what mm -hmm. is the space of the private rooms to start with? You, uh... um, yeah, so... Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, so the, the sandbox is like 32 or something. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's a relatively small thing. And then, yeah, when you uh some there's a bit of confusion about this but basically if you look behind the sandbox there's hallways kind of like those hallways and each of them has like an option to buy basically an entire room for yourself and you can buy an infinite number of those um so you can basically have as many rooms as you want to have to mess around with ideas and all that stuff um but a given room is at least a fixed size so mm. the sandbox there, yeah. is, is always the same size and these rooms are always the same Okay. Yeah, so you could take that's what we were talking about, like taking from the private world, copying that, and then pasting it into the wilds because they're all the same size. Gotcha. Okay. So that's interesting. Yeah, the only the only exceptions that have different map sizes are the tutorial and, oh, and the sandbox. Yeah. Okay. I really like what they did with that doorway. I'm gonna copy that. That's really fun. What, little, this, the way they did the pumps onto the like border. I've been looking <laughs> at it, it's like Egyptian style. It's very cool. Yeah, best be careful though. If you look at the, we have a building guide now, Steve. Yeah. Against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm I'm about run out of questions, but one of them was 
we're going to be able to change the tune on the radio. It drives me crazy. It really does. I, I, I'm like, please give me an option. So I, I, I know it's not related, but like uh, one of my, one of the games I play, Barbaria, you can use one of your own MP4 files or something in there. I know you're worried about copyright stuff, but there's plenty of, you know, royalty free music so anything different on the on the radio <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll probably can... have multiple uh channels on there we're still trying to figure out basically like what the kind of lore with the radio is but there's definitely yeah. going to be more songs on it that's that much i can confirm for sure yeah. uh, but we're deciding between whether or not it's going to be like a radio station type thing or if it's just like an mp3 player where you just change which song you're playing um because there might be something yeah. fun about like having like a, a world where there's like stations that play this type of music or this so, right. yeah, all we know we're, is that be we're debating basically yeah. two <laughs> options kind of in our heads. One was, you know, uh, like a station model, kind of like um, Grand Theft Auto V, you know, where you, you, there's actually like, it's almost like you're tuning into a physical radio where you hear stations maybe and people talking, you know, there's a rock station or, you know, we wouldn't have like a rap. I don't know, like, we would probably be <laughs> like, I don't know what the stations would be. Um, and then the other way is just doing it like, um, more so of like community songs maybe mm -hmm. and and songs that we make uh we're unsure but if the radio is too annoying for you you can either turn it off and hope people don't turn it on or uh, in the <laughs> settings there is a disable music setting if it really drives you insane well no so like like in my space if i went in there you know i don't want to listen to the elevator music depending on what what my mood is i want to listen to something uh -huh. else i like the radio station kind of thing you know you could put mm. something on and, and get some different stuff because i mean royalty free it goes anywhere from classical to hard rock you can find any of that kind of stuff and i i don't know how it applies game wise but i'm just uh, look looking mm -hmm. looking at that so something yeah. like that would be cool yeah. You know, mm. Wow. I just had another weird idea. So if you had like radio stations, you could maybe get players to record some stuff or DJ or something like that. That might be mm -hmm. might be cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're we're unsure. You know, we've got a lot of yeah. things to focus on. So I, I, I understand. Unsure, unsure I understand. How hard the how high the <laughs> radio lot, is in our yeah. priorities, but but definitely like we we hope to expand that system as as yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I think I've gone through all my questions. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about or get out there? Um, Gosh, I hope people have fun, share items, be sociable. Like that's the biggest thing is like when we create this is the ability to share and gather and have fun with your friends. I think that's the biggest thing we want to see. Is yeah. Just people having a good time. I, I think a thing I want to also stress is like Eves isn't about winning. You know, hide and seek is fun. But, uh, you know, this is really a game that it's it's more of a social game than it is about winning. That's why we don't, you know, give you butt coins for like kills or like for winning or anything. Like, but that's not the point. The point is not that you should be sweating and, you know, playing the, the point is you should be sharing items, building, having fun and just experiencing this world with everyone else. You know, that's why we have items, you know, like the Frisbee, you yeah. know, <laughs> and it's because, because we hope people just come in here and hang out uh, rather than, you know, get super sweaty and play the game. Okay. Yeah, and that's why a lot of the things we sort of talked about in this interview have been really about like we think that there's something really cool about just this kind of cohesive world, the fact that you come in here and everything's, you know, in the same place. And we think that especially as the world becomes begins to evolve and as it starts to become more and more community made, that will really start to, you know, see people like, you know, uh take root and, you know, feel like this place is kind of like a home in some mm -hmm. weird that sounds weird, but you know what yeah. I mean, right? <laughs> that like this right. is a place that everyone has built together, right? both through constructing and through you know the memories you make playing and hanging out well, and so that's why we're really excited to see what everyone builds and of course what everyone yeah. does around and stuff. Obviously, has. so yeah that's that's one of the things that i like is the is the building aspect because I'll, I'll name drop here but you know grab that's one of my favorites mm -hmm. since i've been playing because you can build it and share it and you know i see the same kind of thing here that's why i'm 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 interested. Yeah. I got to get some more build materials nope. though, because all I got is fans and, yes. a, and a tall tower and my umbrellas right now. <laughs> it's still cool, yeah, because yeah, I can go like twice yeah. the height of the room with my two umbrellas. But uh... yeah, grab, grab was definitely an inspiration for this game, for sure. So, but uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, well, thanks for coming to talk to us. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for talking to me, and uh, I'll 
well this this is this is what this is what we got to get used to doing you know the thumbs up nah yeah. but this is it rock and roll oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right all right gentlemen all right. thank you very much cool. thanks for sharing your time yeah, catch man. you later yeah